brand new activity on 115 means you've got to just use learning targets. So go ahead and take those two learning targets, break them apart. Let's see what we're going to be practicing with this piece. Okay, there's two specific targets with this activity. The first one is what we're focusing on today. The second is for tomorrow. So today our goal is to evaluate rules and laws in society. And we're going to get started off with this very first question. So could you read that for us, please, Danielle, number one? Okay, what does ban mean? Yeah, Michael? Good, to suspend something, to take it away. So why do you think people might want to get rid of certain books? What might be the rationale there? Yeah, Bob? They're afraid Hey, they're afraid that maybe some individuals would be smarter than them. I'd probably write that down. Trent? Maybe they personally don't agree with it. They want others to not agree with the content either. Anything else? It may have ideals outside of their society. It may have ideals outside of their society, outside their community, 100%. All right, now that's going to bring us to step two. And what I want you to do for step two is I want you to highlight what you see pop up on the screen now. We're going to be reading an article about Band Book Week. And what we're going to do while we read the article, we're going to mark the text for information about the main idea of this piece. I'll be sharing with you what I think is the most important. Yours might be a little bit different, and that's completely okay. So I'm going to ask the folks to read particular passages aloud. It's not hard. It's not tricky. But the more help I can get, the better. So the article is about Banned Books Week, celebrating the freedom to read. So any volunteers to start? Yeah, I do have some. Could you go ahead, Tristan, and read the first chunk for us? How during the last week of September, Banned Books Week highlights the benefits of free and open access to information while drawing attention to the harms of censorship by spotlight lighting, actual or attempt banning of books across the United States. Okay, highlight what you think is very important in that first chunk. Okay, this is personally what I thought was important. Maybe you found something similar. I just pulled out what in the world was Banned Books Week. It celebrates freedom to read, celebrates the importance of the First Amendment, rights to speech, and it draws attention to the harms of censorship. All right, that second chunk, could you read that for us, Sarah? Intellectual freedom, the freedom to access information and express ideas, even if the information and ideas and the might be considered unorthodox or unpopular. Provides the foundation for a banned book week, CBW stresses the importance of ensuring the availability of unorthodox and unpopular viewpoints for all who wish to read and access them. All right, go ahead and highlight what you think is the most important info there. Maybe you felt the same way as me. Maybe you felt different. I pulled off this chunk. Banned Books Week stresses the importance of ensuring the availability of unpopular viewpoints. So allowing access to any material, regardless if someone believes in it or not, but just having it available for folks. All right, the last chunk, for sake of time, I'm going to quick ramble through this one, okay? 
The books featured during banned book leaks have been targets of attempted bannings. Fortunately, while some books were banned or restricted, in the majority of cases the books were not banned, all thanks to the efforts of librarians, teachers, booksellers, and members of the community to retain the books in the library collections. Imagine how many more books might be challenged and possibly banned or restricted if librarians, teachers, booksellers across the country did not I'm sorry, I did not use Banned Books Week each year to teach the importance of the First Amendment, rights, and the power of literature, and to draw attention to the danger that exists when restraints are imposed on the availability of information in a free society. Take a moment, highlight what you think is important. Maybe you agreed, maybe you didn't. This is what I pulled out. Just at the very end, I thought there was a really good note in there about how Van Book Week attempts to draw attention to the danger of keeping information from folks. One of that I can think of, for instance, that got banned in our country, in a certain state, Harry Potter. Yeah. Harry Potter got banned. Whole series banned from a particular state. I'm not going to say what state. Maybe you could find that information out yourself. But imagine that. For us, that's something simple. It's a kid who learns to become a wizard, but some society thinks that information is not right. And so they're keeping children from getting to learn about something like this. Now, Think about it too. Let's say all books are banned. For some of you, that's not going to be a big deal, right? You don't read books. You only have to when you're in school. But information on the internet comes from other knowledge, comes from books, comes from text. It's gone. Imagine not being able to go home at night, what I'm sure most of you do. I'm going to go online. I'm going to check out Facebook, hang out with my friends, gone. Because society doesn't want you to have that access anymore. Tumblr, gone. Think of all of those apps that you use being taken because society says, no, I don't want you to know any of that info out there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And imagine if that was gone. I don't want the public to know that information. Now that would be a world to live in. All right, now what I'm going to have to do is flip over to page 116. And Michael, could you read step three for us all the way at the top? Okay, now there's essentially two questions in that one. One, why are books important? Two, what do books symbolize? So, I'm going to have you take about two minutes. You can write in a complete sentence, or you could just put bullet points, take some notes. But I want you to answer those two points as best as you can. If you're still jotting ideas down, not a problem. I just want to talk about a few things maybe you brought up. So the first part of the question, why are books important to society? What are some of the thoughts you came up with? Get some new hands here. Why, what did you say was important about books to society? Maybe it helps them become a reader. Maybe it helps them show that they become a faster reader. Yeah, that's I feel like that helps the brain to exercise the brain. Exercise the brain, work on visualizing, picturing images. Jeannie? Build up knowledge. Okay. Now, the second part of the question is asking, well, what does a book symbolize? So, if I had a book up to you and I told you what words come to your mind with a book, what might be some of those terms? Creativity. Ooh, creativity. Fun, entertainment. What else could a book symbolize? Sex? That's okay. 
Yeah, Judy? Oh, no, no, never mind. What do you think about? What does the book symbolize? It could very much symbolize someone's life. What about knowledge, wisdom? The whole idea of textbooks, those dreaded items, okay? Now, what I'm going to have to do on the rest of this page, we're going to cross off a lot of stuff here that's really not necessary. So first thing I want you to cross off, don't slack it out, but just a simple X will do just fine. Cross off the idea of the setting. And number four, we're not going to touch that. The only piece I want us to look at is number five. So, could you read number five for us, please, Jean? Five. Okay, in Jonas's society, what's the deal with books? This is something that you just read about. So now we're going to separate my readers from my kids that are trying to fluff it off. Ooh, interesting. So? Uh, they aren't really allowed to have, like, information on the Very good. Both pointed out that in Jonas's society, no books are allowed, no informational text, but someone can have a book. Someone can have informational text. Who's the person that's allowed to look at books, read books? Alexis? Very good. The giver, who is technically the receiver of memory. So, who's able to have books right now? Alexis? In Jonas's society, who's allowed to have books? The receiver and accepting the receiver. Accepting the receiver and stuff. So you've got the receiver and who else now has access to books? Yeah, yeah Jonas now has access to books. Now, you definitely should have been writing that down for number five, especially if you didn't read. And we're going to go ahead and move on to number seven. I'm just moving you folks quick because this part's going to take a little bit of time. So, number seven has got this big old chart. Don't get scared. It's actually pretty simple here. But again, you have to have been reading this book to be able to fill this in appropriately. So, go ahead and read number seven for us, please, please. Okay, now things are going to show up on this chart that I want you to highlight or take note of. So we've got three columns here. The first column says we have to state a rule or law in the society. Some of you saw what happened and some of you didn't. Get with it, watch the screen, make the marks that appear. So that first column to the left, we're going to be writing down three rules or laws of the society. And I'll present you one after we talk about this chart. Now, the second column is asking you to analyze, but the wording there, I don't like. So instead of the wording that's in that column, I want you to write that. So after we write down a rule or law of Jonas' society, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to see why was the rule made. Sometimes the book gives us an explicit reason, and sometimes it's just inferred. We get the idea of why they may have made it. Okay, now the third part, or the third column, the evaluate. You have to do two things here. One thing you have to do is state why you disagree with that rule, so you're not okay with it. And the second piece to the evaluate that you have to take care of, you need to form a level three question. Now, undoubtedly, at least half of you probably can't recall off the top of your head what a level three question is. So what I want you to do is keep your finger on page 117. I want you to flip back to 109. It's an else that we made about levels of questions. Okay, now on page 109, look at where level 3 question is at. 
And I'm going to ask you a couple questions just to make sure that you guys get what this is. Is an answer to a level three question directly in your book? No. Very good. It is not. Can a level three question be applied to your book and to real life? Yes. Yes, 100%. That's all you really need to know. All right, now I'm going to help you folks fill in the first row. Watch the screen, fill in what you see. So the first rule of law that I'm going to have you write down from Jonas' Society, books are a part of a normal individual's life. Now, normal, anyone who's not the receiver or the giver. Now, the next part that we have to complete, why was the rule made? Well, we can infer from what the giver's information was. The society, the elders, the government, they think books are dangerous. They don't want all of the citizens to have information. They don't. They only want the receiver to have it. And whoever is in training, which at this point is Jonas. So that part's pretty easy. There's our rule. There's the reason why the rule was made. The last part is the evaluation. So the first thing you have to do is write down why do you disagree with that rule? Why shouldn't the government restrict people from knowing their past, their present, their future? Why shouldn't they be allowed that? Take a moment to write your response. And I'm going to give you an example of a level three question. So the question one pertains to the rule. Second, it can be applied to the book. Third, it can be applied to real life. So your phrasing of the question needs to be something that does happen in real life. So here's an example of a level three question that fits the topic of the rule. How can societies justify banning books? Banning books happens in our story. Banning books happens in real life. Remember, a level three question needs to be applied to both the book and to the real world. Now, once you've got all this information down, I'm going to be giving you about nine minutes to tackle the other two rows. I don't mind if you work with a partner by yourself in a group, whatever's going to work best for you. You can choose rules that happened in the very beginning of the book. You can choose rules that perhaps you learned about past chapter 10 because you were continuing to read. But you've got nine minutes to fill in the remaining portion of this chart. Go ahead. Thank you.